Welcome to Shots of CS. In this video, we will use a handful of playing cards to demonstrate the bubble sort algorithm. Our goal is to take our input, this unordered set of playing cards, and over a series of passes, we will compare adjacent cards and swap them if they are unordered in order to arrive at our output. In this case, playing cards that are sorted in ascending order. All right. Before we walk through the first pass, let's make a couple of notes. First, in this pass, we have seven playing cards to consider. However, since our focus is on comparing adjacent cards, we find we have six pairs of adjacent cards. Now let's watch the first pass. Now, as you can see, by the end of the first pass, the highest card is bubbled up to its position. So we don't need to consider it in our comparisons going forward, which means for the next pass, we only have six playing cards, five adjacent pairs to consider. Bottom line, in a given pass, if the number of cards we are considering is n, then the number of adjacent pairs that we are considering is n minus one. Now let's write some pseudocode for a given pass. For each consecutive pair in remaining unordered cards, Let's check to see if they're in order, and if they aren't, we swap them. Now that we have the process for a single pass, we need to add the control to move from one to the next. As we mentioned earlier, after the first pass, the last card is sorted and we no longer need to consider it, so there are six remaining cards. And for each subsequent pass, there is one additional sorted card, and therefore one less we need to consider. Notice we built our inner loop with a variable n, which represents the number of cards we need to look at our outer loop will need to pass in the number of cards to consider. So let's add to our loop an outer loop that will walk down from the original number of cards. Now let's see the bubble sort in action. Keep an eye on the number of comparisons done in each pass. Now we're gonna pause here for a second. In the pass that we just completed, we didn't make any swaps. Now, we could continue with the remaining passes, but since there were no changes in the order of the cards, there wouldn't be any additional swaps to occur. So we could declare victory rather than finishing out the remainder of the passes. Since we don't want to waste time with useless passes, let's add a check into our algorithm. After each pass, if no swaps were made, we will set a condition that forces us to exit the outer loop. It's bubble sort. It isn't very efficient, but it is easy to implement. 